Hey ya folks, this is Hobby Linux episode 1, or the official start of the new project. Now I've been talking about spinning up a new Linux distro for a while, like over the past month or so, I guess, but the truth is, I've actually had my own Linux distro. It's called EGOS, and it's lived in the cloud all this time. At various points, it was based on Arch, Ubuntu, and Debian, but this is not about EGOS. No, this is about Hobby Linux, a brand new Linux distribution and free software project. But before all that, let me show you this game. It's War Thunder, you know, the game that gets classified military docs leaked into their forums all the time. Not exactly the least divisive game to play at the moment, but it's really fun and I'm low tier because I'm too cheap to buy anything. And I also play on arcade mode because I really like the crazy battles where it's like four guys on one little plane. And I like War Thunder for the action and the graphics. It has a built-in benchmark that I use all the time, and it makes great filler footage because it's pretty and interesting. And anyway, this video is the first of the new Hobby Linux development playlist. I'm not going to do like a devlog thing because that's content production, and that takes time. I want to code and not make videos about coding. I know it seems like I do a lot between my YouTube channels and projects, but I break my work into chunks between days of the week. So that means that my schedule is typically very strict, but it apparently works because I've been doing this for about a year now. Now I'm effectively a full stack software developer with a focus in cloud infrastructure and automated testing, which is a pretty solid skill set, honestly, and one that almost lends itself into making high quality Linux distros. I've maintained forks of Linux distros, entire apt repos for companies, and built immutable pipelines for cloud machine images and headless browser testing, all kinds of stuff. I've done a lot of stuff just here on the channel. I mean, come on, distro delves? I'm equipped for this. Now, the new distro's name is Hobby Linux. I like to think of it as a vintage modern distro. The design goals are to bring us back to basics with a new distro and desktop that is meant for you and your hobbies. So it is not a desktop distro for everyone, but rather a distro for hobbyists and tinkerers. It's a type of Linux distro that you'd see sold at Radio Shack or some other small radio or software store from the 90s. This will be a distro for designers, 3D printers, coders, ham radio operators, Arduino builders, you know, like hobbyists, hobby stuff. I've been using that term a lot lately because I look at everything that I do as a hobby. Content production is a hobby, and while I do consider myself a hi-fi audio aficionado, I use consumer-level stuff. I've never produced a video or audio with Jack. I don't even use a digital audio workstation, I use Audacity. But a lot of hobbyists are just like that. They don't have time to learn about every little teeny tiny thing, they just want to start building and hacking on things. Now the company's headquarters is at the Hobby Shop Discord. The website is hosted on GitHub, but it's not much now. Branding and marketing isn't exactly my strong suit, so that's not what I'm focusing on now. All of my random dev ramblings are going to happen at the hobby shop, so if you want to follow the development, go there. I'll also post updates from time to time here on the YouTube community page, but the big ones and stuff will probably happen as actual videos. Now, I'm not really planning much in the short term. I'm working and just kind of taking notes as I go, so there's probably not a lot on GitHub right now. I do have a lot of long-term plans, but the short-term is just to get a dev environment running so I can begin hacking. Hobby Linux is little more than just a custom installer on top of Arch or Arch's ISO, so that's right, by the way, it is based on Arch Linux, at least for now. My goal is for it to become independent from Arch, the way that KAOS is. Eventually, I'd love to see it become kind of like Raspbian is on the desktop, with a repo and tools suited for a particular workflow and environment. In that way, Hobby Linux isn't really designed for you to run it as your daily or even a workstation, but there's nothing stopping you from it. And since I'll be developing it, I might as well dog food by using it as my own machine as a target use case. I've already had to reinstall twice for various reasons. After that botched stream from a couple weeks ago, I actually did install Endeavor OS to get a feel for how a pre-installed Arch should run. And after that, I switched to Arch using the Arch installer, like the OG one. I could have used my own custom one, but again I wanted something solid that I could kind of bolster my experience with a more professional Arch install. I'm coming from Debian land, so I'm actually getting up to speed with Arch and how Arch does things. It's not too bad, the Arch wiki's great, obviously. But so right now Hobby Linux is basically a barebone Arch install with a Mate desktop. I've noticed just a few things that the Arch installer does that I don't do in Hobby Linux, so there's already kind of a difference between the two, it's not just Arch. 
Now, Mate might seem like a curious choice, but the purpose of the desktop is really to stay out of your way. I've got some work to do with the styling, but the overall functionality is here. Modern desktops like GNOME and KDE just take too much resource to even just sit there and idle, and Wayland requires hardware acceleration, which means a lot of old machines simply don't work anymore. That was actually one of the main reasons why I wanted to start my very own distro. Everyone's so focused on the future and getting the latest and greatest tools and technologies that it's like we've completely forgot about the past and old, slow, antique machines. Now you might remember my old Terizaw machine from the old Distro Delves Live that I did. I was doing that for a while, but the performance on that machine just kept getting worse and worse and worse to the point where I couldn't even install anything live because it was so slow. More recently, I tried to use it as just a basic server host with a, a very simple UI and it couldn't even do that. And it may not seem like a big deal to just phase out these old machines because they're slower because they have security issues, but the thing is, that's a lot of really toxic e-waste. I want to be able to promote environmental sustainability in computing, starting with the operating system. These old computers like Terry's, uh, they're still good, they're just slow. And maybe they got CPUs that have some vulnerabilities, but I'd wager that a lot of hobbyists use old computers or underpowered hardware for their weird project, and maybe it's a dedicated PC in another room or an old laptop or something like that, but that's what Hobby Linux is meant for. I don't like the term low spec because I feel like that implies a lack of features and style. Hobby Linux should have a vintage feel, but with modern enough features that you've come to expect on, say, GNOME, KDE, or Windows. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of questions about why this or why not that, and I'll make a video about probably every topic you may have, but if I tried to address everything here, this video would go on and on for like an hour or more, so I'm just going to cut it off here. If you want to join the discourse, then you should join the Discord server. It's EG's Hobby Shop Discord, and it's where the R&D for Hobby Linux happens at. You can also follow me in the project on GitHub, and if you're interested in Hobby Linux and the goals I talked about here, then why not become a member? The support I get from here and there goes a long ways in helping me achieve these goals and cost of infrastructure and everything, so... And of course, you can just subscribe and watch and leave a like and comment, and yeah. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.